Hey everyone, well we've got some pretty big bombshells in the world of AI video. Namely, Google has yet another new video model and 30 to 60 minute consistent and enjoyable AI films coming soon. We'll talk. Plus, we're gonna take a look at a tool that is going to be really helpful if you are terrible at 3D like I am. I mean, obviously, if you're good at 3D, I think that this tool will be helpful as well. And I've got an interesting mid-journey dive, well, maybe less of a dive and more of a splunking into an area that I don't think anybody else has covered yet and just might show the direction that mid-journey's future is headed in. All that plus an AI city of the future that is already here. All right, let's dive in. Kicking off, Google have announced Lumiere, a new video generation model. Now you might be thinking to yourself, didn't Google just do this like a month ago? And yes, yes they did. About three weeks ago, Google dropped Video Poet, a zero shot video generator. Does anyone know what is happening at Google right now? Does anyone at Google know what's happening at Google right now? Well, anyhow, as of today, we have Lumiere, which does something kind of different than previous video generators. Namely, this is a space time diffusion fusion model. So we are going to rip a hole into the space time continuum and see what makes Lumiere different. But first, let's take a look at sort of like the standard features. Uh, text to video, for example, it does a really great job with walk cycles like this is uh, astronaut on planet Mars. He doesn't look like he's like moonwalking or sliding all over the planet. Handheld shot of a woman walking through an autumn forest and an adorable puppy that isn't morphing into something horrific. Two other shots that I thought were pretty exceptional were the Jack Russell Terrier on a snowboard. They actually called out GoPro shot in this and it definitely does have that characteristic GoPro fisheye look. The Lamborghini is also really nice. There are some incoherencies in terms of the road and maybe the physics of the car turning, but the fact that it's actually holding the model of the car together and not like morphing into a fire truck is impressive. Image to video also looks very good. Uh, the characteristics and the smile on the girl with the pearl earring looks very naturalistic. And I mean, those are five fingers on Sir Isaac Newton as he's waving hello. So funny enough, they also animated the famous flag over Iwo Jima shot, uh, which Google Poet also did. But on the video poet side, we kind of ended up with like this weird gopher kind of appearing out of nowhere. It also has this stylized generation, which is something that I don't think I've seen before this, wherein you can give the model a reference image and then it will generate videos in the style of that reference image. For example, here we have like this vector image and if you prompt a bear twirling with delight, you get this and a cute bunny nibbling on a carrot. So it's definitely taking the elements of that, you know, vector illustrate kind of style and applying it over to the video model. We've also got video stylization, kind of that gen one thing where, you know, you can take an input video and change it into a variety of styles. At first I thought that it was actually completely completely segmenting out the background, but actually in further reflection, it does look like it does change out the backgrounds for each one of these. Like in the Made of Flowers, we have kind of like the Eiffel Tower in a bouquet look back there. Made of Flowers for some reason is also super disturbing to me. You would think like Made of Flowers, it's that's nice and pleasant, but it actually comes off as like, like one step away from the Cordycep virus in The Last of Us. It also does video inpainting and outpainting, and it looks like it does that pretty well, considering you've got like this balloon here with the mask on this side, and it's completely making up, you know, these other balloons and the remainder of the sky and horizon. The pizza example is actually really impressive as well, considering that it has to generate not only the top half of that pizza, but the hand crossing into the mast area and dropping basil onto it. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So how is Lumiere different from other video models? And remember, this is my caveman brain reading the big words in the paper, so this is gonna be really simplified. Basically, it all comes down to this architecture called space-time UNet, which allows for the video to be created all at once, as opposed to, I guess, other models, which begin with an input frame and then have an output frame and then generate keyframes between those. The problem with other video models, as you can see in this example, is like you have your input frame here and your output output frame here. And then if you look down here, there's kind of this, this temporal break in the chain right here. Whereas with the space time unit, um, you know, we have an unbroken chain also because the video is generated all at once in space time, as opposed to, you know, creating individual frames from an in and an out, it frees the model up for a lot of other tasks like video stylization, in an out painting and image to video. So all of those will be a lot more temporally coherent as well. So it all looks really cool and super promising. And of course that leads to the question, do we get to play with it? And the answer is, I don't know. 
I don't know if they release another video model in like three weeks. I'm just hoping that they name it something like on the nose, like Kafka. Moving on, are we going to be seeing 30 to 60 minute long, completely AI generated films sometime this year, or even trimming that down sometime in the next two months? Well, in a recent tweet by YouTube's own Matt Wolf, uh, congratulations, Matt, you have gone from reporting on the news to becoming the news. Anyways, Matt says yes. The tweet reads, in my 2024 predictions video, that video will be linked below, I made a comment that I don't think AI is going to be creating full length shows and films this year. 30 to 60 minute stories that were coherent and enjoyable won't be available this year. I was wrong. The next two months will be wild. Winky face. Now, Matt can't go into a lot of details on this due to the fact that he signed a non-disclosure agreement, but he was able to field a few questions. For example, when Dan the Man asked if this was going to be stock footage type mashups, uh, something that we saw with in video, but uh, no, Matt says he's talking about fully generated videos. Additionally, this technology will be available for everyone to use. It's not gonna be locked behind some like private firewalled gate in some you know studio mogul's house. And lastly, in terms of a time frame as to when we will all see this, Matt says that he thinks that next month people will see what he saw. Now, I can't comment too much on Matt's post, namely because I may or may not have signed a very similar non-disclosure agreement. Uh, that said, now would be a good time to hit the subscribe button. What I can say is that I keep thinking about a news story involving Avengers director Joe Russo, in which he said that he fully expected full AI movies within two years. That story came out in April of 2023, so, you know, TikTok. Moving on, if you're not great with 3D or just downright suck at it like I do, uh, I think now is a really good time to start learning some very basic fundamentals about it because I do think that a lot of creative AI is going to be moving in that direction as the year progresses. I'll have some news on that in just a little bit. Now, I don't think that you need like a 70 hour tutorial on Blender, unless you're interested in it, in which case go for it. You can start with something a little bit simpler, which brings us to Meshi, who are sponsoring today's video. So Meshi is an AI text to 3D model generator. It is free with 200 credits per month, so that's perfect if you're just getting started, although it does have paid tiers, obviously, as you ramp up. And I do have a coupon code for you as well. We'll get to that in just a minute. Meshi is very easy to use. You just come down to this like text to 3D button here. Um, you know, you can describe your object here put in a style, this would be sort of the descriptors that you want for your object, and then negative prompts as well. Below that, you can choose from a number of different art styles, ranging from realistic uh, voxel, which is kind of that Minecraft, um, you know, Lego block look, um, all the way down to like realistic hand-drawn and cartoon line art. Uh, I quickly generated up a spaceship, and yeah, there you go, a 3D spaceship. Now, I didn't give it too many details. Uh, the style was just highly detailed sci-fi Unreal Engine, and I did not give it any negative prompts. You do also have texture options over here for color or PBR. Uh, PBR, as I learned, has to do with sort of reflectivity. And I will say that Meshi really excels when you're generating things like props or if you're aiming for more of a like cartoon or animated style. When you aim for the realistic stuff, it gets a little bit on the wonky side. We'll take a look at that in one second. But first, let's generate us a cute dragon. So with the very simple prompt, cute baby dragon, you end up with four kind of like low res versions of dragon options. Like we could go in and do a lot of other stuff in the prompt to call out certain colors or whatnot. Um, but once you find one that you like, if you hit this refine button, you will end up with a refined version. So you can see definitely the model has improved on a lot of details. So circling back to the realistic side, or at least quote unquote realistic in this case, I did try generating up a superhero full body pose in a comic book style. Indeed, we did get our guy, although you will see that there are some issues uh, going on in the face there. Um, that's that's fine. That's If that's where the technology is right now, that's where it is. If you are somebody that is good with 3D, I'm sure that that would be a super easy fix. But for someone like me, I mean, honestly, the simplest solution is just to start generating up characters that are either wearing helmets or masks, like this kind of Warhammer inspired Space Marine. So if you do end up with a model that you like, you just don't like the overall kind of look or vibe of it, you can always download it. Uh, I just download it as an FBX. Uh, and then kick back over to the main menu. 
where you can use this AI texturing module. Um, you simply come and hit new project. Uh, we'll describe this as a robot uh, and then upload your FBX file here. Once that's in, you see that our model is here, but textureless. Uh, and then you can come through and prompt for what textures you would like to see. For example, here we take our untextured model and run it with the prompt, a cyberpunk robot with black metal armor. Uh, and yeah, we get this, which looks pretty cool. Now you might be thinking, well, that's kind of cool, but what can I do with that? It's just a character that's just sort of standing there. I am not a 3D animator. For that, we're gonna download our model and take it over to Adobe's Mixamo. So Adobe Mixamo is a completely free uh, auto rigger for 3D characters. It basically builds you know, the skeleton for 3D characters, as well as provides a number of animations for it. I actually don't know why Mixamo isn't bigger than it is. It seems to be kind of one of those like lost forgotten experiments of Adobe. They actually do provide a number of different characters here, but what's really cool is that you can upload your own character. So uh, we're gonna take the zip file that we downloaded of our cyberpunk robot. From here, you just basically point these dots, you know, chin, wrists, etc. And once you have everything lined up, uh, hit the next button. And in just a few minutes, we have our character completely rigged up and we have total camera control over everything. Yeah, it's really kind of a lot of fun. Now you will notice that our character is a little bit on the low res side right now. Uh, that's just a Mixamo limitation. To get those textures back and into full res, you would bring it into something like Blender. Um, we're not gonna get into that because like I said, that is a rabbit hole that is 70 hours deep. So if you're just dipping your toes into 3D like I am, I think that Meshi provides a really cool solution in that you can generate up assets and then bring them into a 3D software package and start playing around with it. If you're on sort of a higher 3D level, Meshi does have a number of tutorials um, for you on incorporating it into Blender or Unity, which they also do have a plugin for. Uh, yeah, all of this is way above my head though. But you can also apparently generate your textures in Meshi up to 4K. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. The link to Meshi is down below. Once again, they do have a free tier, but they also have a pro and a max tier as well. If you are interested in subscribing to either of those, if you use the coupon code Theo, T-H-E-O, uh, you get 20% off. My thanks to Meshi for sponsoring this video. Moving on, but still kind of staying within the realm of 3D, I do love a good magic trick and Nick Bieler uh, posted this up, which is just really super cool. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. It's a 3D object in front of the TV that has that background. Yeah, it's really awesome. So to accomplish this, Nick actually sculpted the character in the PlayStation software Dreams and did so in VR as well. So uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It is a real shame that Sony kind of gave up on Dreams. Uh, I do hope that somebody ends up picking up the technology, especially as we're making this push in to VR with things like, you know, the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, from there, Nick took the model out into AR software. I believe it was Luma Labs that he ended up using. Um, yeah, and there you go. And finally, using a still image export of the environment on his TV, kind of like it's a duct tape version of Disney's The Volume, and placing the AR character in front of it, we, we end up with this, which is, I don't know, it's so cool. I just love experiments like this. Speaking of Dreams, which was developed by a company called Media Molecule, which I do not believe exists anymore, uh, one of the programmers and co-founders of Media Molecule, uh, Alex Evans, is now working at Midjourney. Turns out you can learn a lot just by stumbling around LinkedIn. Now, I don't necessarily know what work Alex is doing at Midjourney. He is listed as a principal research engineer and is doing so remotely actually in the UK as well. But I don't think it's too much of a stretch to think that he might be working on some of the 3D aspects of Midjourney. I do think that the general consensus when it comes to all of this is that you will be able to, you know, prompt an image and then have camera rotational tools and be able to sort of move around in 3D space for your 2D images. But I mean, honestly, who knows? Given the fact that Alex is working with Midjourney, I mean, who knows what this is going to look like. But it is interesting to think that there is going to be a little bit of that Dreams DNA in Midjourney. Also, did you know that Midjourney has a head of hardware? I mean, I had to go digging into that. And as it turns out, yeah, in an office hours that I missed, but luckily Nick St. Pierre was at, um, Midjourney is building hardware. In office hours yesterday, they mentioned a newly formed hardware team that's currently focused on collecting data for 3D. It's going to be an orb. It's described as a device that enables anyone to 
organize and manage tens of thousands of virtual 3D spaces. I mean, I don't know. I still don't know what that means, but I don't know. I kind of want one. Rounding out, we have the first AI city. Uh, you might remember a while back, the simulation created a fully AI generated South Park episodes. Well, they're back, this time with Sim Francisco. Props on that name. So Sim Francisco is populated by a bunch of AI agents, all of whom have been prompted to have wants, needs, and desires and interact and learn from one another. The agents have instructions to fall in love. And in fact, the agents do have lifespans, so they actually die as well. Additionally, they relax by playing old school Nintendo games. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, kids. Now I'll say the overall graphical interface of Sim Francisco is very much in line with that South Park animation that they did. As you can see, we're kind of scrolling around through the city here, zeroing in on one of the characters. And, uh, you know, we see her talking to an Alexa. It very much looks like the South Park style of animation. So yes, while the overall visual presentation does look a lot like something we've already seen, uh, I'm actually a lot more interested in what's happening under the hood because apparently Sim Francisco is just running all the time. So it's kind of like a hyperactive version of the Sims that never ends. The ultimate goal that the simulation are trying to achieve with Sim Francisco is AGI. And I, I mean, I don't know, who knows, maybe it'll work. It actually really reminds me of uh, the old Simpsons episode with Lisa's tooth. If there's one thing that we've learned, if the Simpsons did it, it ends up coming true. On that note, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.